שלום, my name is Dr. Danny Bingigi, and I've been a, prof- a teacher, uh, the, the head of the Hebrew programs at Arizona State University for 10 years. And in the course of my work, I met many, many pastors. Some of them are leading pastors in America. We're going to talk today about a new amazing project called the Mark Builds Bible. Now, this Bible is basically not a stand-alone Bible. It's not that Mark Builds, the pastor Mark Builds, has rewritten the Bible. No. It is the base of the King James Bible that many of you know, and from which 900 or so Bibles have been draw- drawing their versions, right? But this is a very reliable, the most closest one that there was until the Mark Builds Bible is coming to the world. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what it does. And to introduce it properly and show you what is my connection to the Bible, as I was a teacher, a professor at, at Arizona State University, I've been approached by different pastors in America. Uh, some of them are very well known in the country. And um, they, before their preaching, uh, important preaching in uh, large audiences, they'll call me and say, hey, let's check what is that verse saying exactly. And there's one thing I did, and I was very keen on keeping the word as it is because the source is the Hebrew. Whether people like it or, with it, or they're not familiar with that, the source of everything is really in the Hebrew. Now, the New Testament is not a stand-alone book. It's very deeply and very heavily connected, interwoven to the source of many of the verses there. Hundreds of verses just in the book of Revelation alone are connected to verses coming from the Old Testament. They are so interwoven, it's unbelievable. They are so connected, it's almost like one entity living and, and, and so rich, okay? And that's, it. that's what I did. I was teaching and helping many pastors in America. Some of them, you know, were asking me to do a job for them for the whole year. And I wrote the Hebrew, day, the Hebrew word of the day to some. And some others, when they face large audiences, and we're talking about millions. Um, and I was really felt, wow, very honored that they are asking me to teach them. Until I came across a pastor. His name is Pastor Mark Bills. And suddenly I found some pastor that can teach me. And that was a really great discovery. And I was a little bit, hmm, what do you say? And I stared, and I went, I went and I started checking what he's saying. And I checked it in the Hebrew, and I found very thorough observation and understanding. But the main thing was, and this is showing throughout the Mark Bills Bible, a great and amazing and wonderful adherence to the truth. And this has captured me. And we start working together with Pastor Mark, and I brought my Hebrew expertise to his work. And um, we took the book, the King James book. So again, don't look at it as a bragging name like Mark Bills Bible. Mark Bills is basically the presenter of the true and the proper way of the form that we need to show the Bible correctly. And this is basically the book that is now written in a format that is available to everybody, not only in a book that you need to hold, and it's not a book that you hold, but it's an online app, but a very simple one to use. So we have people 80 years old and older uh, that can use it very simply, and I'll show it in a few minutes. As we did the work, we noticed that um, the, the book itself, the King James, and some people, it turns them off, although they love it from childhood, is the difficult language. Because you can see there are a lot of terms, you know, those suffixes like go with, you know, and it makes it cumbersome to read. And people then need to resort, and they are forced to resort to different versions of the Bible, The problem with those, even last night, I spent some time with a scholar and I find out that a lot of the words are, to say it in a very gentle way, 
inaccurate. I don't want to use even harsher languages, but we do find things, and I, not, I discovered that for the first time, I said to three pastors, all of them are authors, years ago, and I said, let's work together on the book, on the New Testament. I said, okay, wonderful. And I look at the Hebrew version, and many of you think that <clears throat> the book was not written in Hebrew originally, and you know what? So far, there is no evidence that it was, except for a lot of the texts in the New Testament are very Hebraic in mind. But let's leave this thing out of an argument right now. <clears throat> let's concentrate on the book itself. To my amazement, I'm sitting with those three pastors, and I'm not going to put the name because some of you know them, um, and I noticed to my amazement that there are departures from what the Hebrew says, <clears throat> especially in places when it's quoting verses from the Old Testament, that those departures are bothersome and troublesome. And as I noticed, many of them are just simple departures because of normal language barriers that translators had, including the great translators of the King James Bible. They, they, they grew up in certain kind of settings and lifestyle, and they imposed or they brought it into their translation. And then I start noticing there are at least two departures per page from, the, from what I see in the true Bible, in the true Hebrew. And um, so most of those departures are normal, human, and forgivable. But some of them are what we call value-embedded departures. They are there in order to impose some kind of ideology or theology. I don't like the word theology. <clears throat> it's coming from the word theus, you know, which is the god of the pagans. You know, theus, you know, the word theology is a derivative from that word. But it comes there, and um, you can see imminent or intrinsic uh, distortions because of that. And um, so we go back, but the, the book is very holy. There is nothing here that we can say that takes away from the holiness of the New Testament. Any version that you use, God is blessing it, but you know, you're after all seeking for the truth, right? And you know, how do you know if there are so many versions, like a thousand, I mean, I heard it 900 or so, and even if there are a hundred, how do you know which one is right? One is written that way, the other one is written that way. Words are different. I'll give you one example. When I look and I find out, even in the King James, that we both, Pastor Mark and myself, cherish and love very much the base, you know, we find out that they're using terms like bishops and deacons, but there weren't any bishops and deacons during the time that the New Testament took place, or the events of the New Testament took place. There weren't any. So what were they really? They were heads of congregations. Because if you say the word bishop, people get the image with those red kippah and the, you know, the gown and all that. That belongs to a different era with all due respect. And we do have respect, except for they don't belong in the New Testament. That's the only thing. We respect them very much, Pastor Mark, Wrote, that did the work, the major work here, respects them very much, but they don't belong in the New Testament period. What else was done there? Uh, Pastor Mark checked and found some things that are very disturbing, and he, well, we did that, he enlightened. But without changing the Bible, and I'm going to show you the demo in a few minutes, uh, we did some very delicate work here, and when we were in doubt in something, we did not, it was not enough to check it in the Hebrew. Let's say there is not enough authority in the Hebrew at all because let's say it was written indeed in Greek. So what do we do? Pastor Mark and myself, we went to the Greek and we did something which I called a nuclear, a nucleus, a dissecting of the words. And this is my expertise. <laughs> I worked with the many interesting people that uh, cared about that. You really find the answer in the... When you, when you take a word and you dissect it to the nucleus, to the atoms of that word, and the truth pops out in an amazing way that is unrefutable, unrefutable and unarguable. And this is not done from a, from a kind of conceited heart. It's done, the work of Pastor Mark is done with love. Love 
for the people that care for the truth in the Bible. And again, he's not changing the Bible. He's not writing the Bible. He's basically restoring the language while keeping the spirit. So the spirit is there. Don't ever feel offended with his work. Now let's talk about the jewels, the beauty, and the treasures in the Mark Bills Bible. Let me show you the Bible itself. So as you as you log in, you know, and it's done in a in a as an online trainer. When you log in, the first thing what you do, you make yourself a username and password. You've done it many times with your banks and in other kind of things. Everybody knows how to do these basic things. Once you're in and it's built as a license, you know, it is built as a license to this Bible. And then let me show you how it really works. So you see here the first screen, okay? This is the first screen. And you see the whole books of the Bible in that screen, very clear, very nice. And since they don't include everything, you scroll down a little bit. You see, you can scroll up and you can scroll down and you can see them all. Let me show you the example. Let's say you want to check the book of Matthew. All you need to do is click on the word Matthew. You don't see my finger, but I'm clicking on the word St. Matthew. And here it is. You can see all the chapters of that book laid out in front of your eyes. Very simple and very easy. So let's go to chapter one. All you need to do is click on chapter one. And it pops up right there. And now you can see what's special in the way that the Mark Bills Bible is written. So look at the first verse, and, if, and it's already done with very large and nice characters. But if you want it bigger, and I know and I appreciate, and some people do need to see very large text, just touch the screen and make it bigger. Look, look at the size, and it stays very sharp, and it's wonderful. And you can use it in anything. You can use it on your computer, on your laptop, on your um, iPads, and so on. Let me, you know tablets and so on, you can make it bigger at any time. But a very special feature, which you call the pillar, a pillar of the Mark Bills Bible, is the audio that is added. This is the teaching of Pastor Mark that he's been teaching me for many years too, and he's been teaching millions of people, if I can say, hundreds of thousands, some people say, but I think it's millions throughout the years, all over the world, in hundreds of countries, and basically what he does, he's been teaching that, and we took all his teaching throughout about 30 years or so, and we put it built into the Bible. This is really, without a doubt, the world world's first built-in audio commentaries. So you read your Bible, and you go, and you see here number one. You can't see my finger, but in number one, you see a picture of a speaker. So you touch it once. Look, I'm touching it once. Here we are opening a book talking about the generation of Jesus Christ. You'll notice above and the word generation. And you can hear, Pastor Mark, I'm not going to play the whole thing. This is the commentary told, of Pastor and in Mark Hebrew, that's on the more than first just a verse. It's all so the to stories. stop it, you scroll down. You can see there is a button called Stop and Audio. You'll notice Jesus it's the red Christ one on the right-hand side. Is actually in the moment I click it, it stops. There is another way to stop. Let's play it again, verse 1. Here we are, opening okay. a book, Scroll down. talking about the and let's generation say you don't want to do that, you just Jesus go to Christ. the next page. Look at the right arrow, the, word the blue arrow on the right the side. Word. You click it once, and it goes to the second page automatically, and starting for verse 6, and it stops the sound. So you don't need to bother about stopping the sound. If you want to go on, you just stop the sound. You can hear it again and again. So in this page, there is no audio, but you go to the next page, and here it is on verse 17. So you click on verse 17. Wow. And you in can verse 17, audio. it's talking all about generations or told dotes. But and let's what say do somebody, you know, Abraham you're in, to David you want to read now generations. a different book. David and to the again, carrying you can away make it bigger at any time. And, and you want to carrying away into Babylon and to the Messiah. And you want to read a different book. You go What's down. The deal with the you see the menu. Well, guess and you what? see, and then it David's says Bible books. And Hebrew, you have it also on the top. When you scroll, you see, you click on Bible books. And you get to the same menu that you have all the books in the Bible. Let's go now to Revelation. You click on Revelation, 
it pops up. It's really quick and nice, you know. Um, and then you can hear the first verse of Revelation. You click there. As we begin the book of Revelation. And then Revelation you can go to the verse? next page. Okay, and there is verse 4. There is commentary in verse 5. You can see that. Make it bigger, you see. In verse 5, there's commentary. Once you touch it, you'll hear, once you touch it, you'll hear the commentary. In verse 5, we see that Yeshua and he tells you what you are. was the and look first at that. begotten of In the dead. In the text itself, let me stop the sound for a second so you can hear me. Kings and priests. I'm stopping the sound. Now look what happens there. These are the changes. So those changes are really not changes of like rewriting the Bible as we find in some books that they really inter, they put theology, theological, that is really not belonging there. You see, the name Jesus, the great, you know, the people grew up with that name. This is not the name that his mother really called him. So if you want to keep authenticity to the original, you know his name was Yeshua, which means salvation. And this is what you'll see. Let me make it bigger. You see? So there is text in in black, this is exactly as it was in King James, and then you can see text in green. This is where the changes that Mark Bill's Bible does. So his name, and then is not Christ at the time, it was called Mashiach, the anointed, right? And you can see more green in other areas, you see? Fixing the language, you know? Behold, he comes, and the word there was a cometh, you know, very difficult to read, so that made it simple. And look at that, even in verse 8. Now, this is interesting, right? Okay, so look, and it says, I am the Aleph and the Tav. And that's what he says in Hebrew. He did not really, Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus, right? He was not talking from the Greek culture of the Alpha and the Omega. He was not an Alpha and he was not an Omega. He spoke from the Hebrew tongue and from the Hebrew alphabet. So what he was saying that I am the Aleph and the Tav. And if you really want to argue about that, bless your innocence. It's really not what he said. He did say, I'm the Aleph and the Tav, because that was his tongue. Even if you want to say that, oh, you're talking Aramaic, well, Alpha and Omega is not Aramaic. It's Greek, and this is not what it spoke. Now, let me tell you something about the Greek. People hold the Greek as something very holy, and um, the, in, in reality... The Greek is a language written by pagans for pagans. And any language is deeply embedded in the culture from which it was emanated, right? So what's the connection between Greek and holiness of the, of the Bible, of the New Testament? The connection is that the Greek people at the time conquered the Holy Land. And as they did, they imposed their statues, the, the Zeus and the Aphrodite and the Poseidon and all the other cutesy mutsi. Uh, gods, and they put them in the holy temple in Jerusalem. So there is nothing holy in those pagan gods, right? And also their language is nothing holy about it. But because they are the majority and they imposed everything, the book that was known and it was found is written in Greek because this was the language of the land, and they had to read it in Greek. But the language itself is not holy. Hebrew is holy. Greek on its inception, it isn't. It's a language of pagans that had those gods, okay? So don't get offended about that. We're talking about just simply historical facts. So we do use the Greek indeed because the translation sometimes is not clear in English, so we had to check the origin, the original translation to the Greek, okay? So here it is an example. And then another expression there in that verse, you know, in verse eight, and it says, Elohei Tsevaot. Okay, that word is throughout any Bibles, both in the Old and the New. It's wrongly translated. They are putting, O God Almighty. It's nothing to do with mighty. The word Tsevaot is armies, hosts. And look at the translation here. So it's not the Lord or the mighty or whatever they say, Almighty. It's the Lord of hosts. That's the word for Adonai Tsevaot. And these are the changes that Pastor Mark builds done in this book. And I think it will get you much closer to the truth and to the reality of the New Testament. There is a heart behind the New Testament. It's not just something that is written there in order to make a statement and this is it. No, there is a heart behind it. 
And the heart is the connection, the un- unbroken tie and connection to the Old Testament. Let's go back to our sample here. And this is what I showed, the Elohei Tzvaot. You see that one? Elohei Tzvaot in Hebrew. Now you see a, a line that is written in blue. Now many people, and if you watch TV and you watch many televangelists and teachers and leaders, they are using more and more Hebrew words. So we made it easy for you. You don't need to be a top word scholar in order to use Hebrew anymore. You don't need to go and consult anyone. You consult the Mark Bills Bible. Look what happens. Every verse is written in Hebrew in red color. You see on the top. And then the blue is the transliteration. Means the phonetic, the sound of the Hebrew in case you want it. You want to teach it to some group. You want to, you know, make a speech about that and say something in Hebrew. The accuracy of that is 99.9%. You're not going to make fun of yourself. Uh, one example that <laughs> comes to my mind, and you can stop the example here. You can stop that and go back to the regular video. One example I can give you here is what I hear in many English speakers when they were to read the first verse from Genesis 1. And I hear it <laughs> so many times, and the first reaction is to laugh out loud, but I don't because I know where it's coming from. So they all say this, and many do. The first verse of Genesis 1 is, Bereshit, bara, and that's what they say, Elohim, et ha-shamayim ve-et ha-aretz, aretz. Okay, so there is an issue called the accent or the stress in the word. When they say, Bereshit, bara, Elohim, in the beginning God created Et HaShamayim, they're actually saying, quote, in the beginning, God created the appraisers and the earth. Now, with all due respect, and I do, to the real estate trade, the appraisers were really not the first to be created. Check it out. Actually, it was the heavens, right? So the word, what's the difference? The word is Shamaim and not Shamaim. And this is like, you can see it here correctly. We separated syllables. You see in verse 8, you can, it, you can just read Hebrew. Anochi Aleph ve Tav, meaning I am the Aleph and the Tav, which people say the Alpha and Omega, and why not doing it correctly in the way Jesus really said it, or Yeshua really said it. This is very important. Let's go back to the example, and I'll show you verse 8 here, you see? And here now you can see it yourself. I make it bigger. Anochi. C-H is chi. Okay? And then Aleph. You can read it just like you're reading English. Ve-tav. What do you read next one? Rosh. Vasof. Means head and end. Okay? Now, this is like another important feature of the Mark Bills Bible. So basically, this is it. You go and you want to change chapters when you're in a particular book. You see all the chapters in front of your eyes. You click on the chapter, okay, and you get the chapter right there, chapter 2. And then you can just go to the next page. And actually, you can just scroll and go page by page to the whole entire Bible. When you see a commentary, there is a commentary or verse 9 here, you see. And I know your work, and instead of thy and so on, we put your and so on. To make it simpler for people to read, you really don't need to resort to other Bibles that really f- went far away from the correct. And it, yes, and I know it's very simple to read, but they are not accurate. We're checking them thoroughly, and each one of them is not correct. This is the true correct translation, or not translation, but restoration of the true language of the New Testament as the work of Pastor Mark builds. And uh, believe me, I was doing a very thorough check to see that everything is aligned with the proper things in the Hebrew, in the language, and also in the Greek. We both did the work. So w- look again at the bottom. So you have chapters. You, have, you want to change the book. You click on Bible books, right? And then you can go back, you know, to any book. You know, let's go back to Matthew. And... You can go to the, okay, go to chapter 3. And you go to the bottom, and so you have chapters. 
on the left, and then you have Bible books when you change it. You, sometimes you don't need to scroll to make it easy. You click on go to the top, and it goes to the top. When you click menu, it goes to the bottom. Save you a lot of clicks and all that. And then you can stop the audio when it's reading. And the very nice feature, if you are where to teach in a small group, and there are many small groups in the world, when people really want to teach that, you can print the page as is. We give you the complete right to do that. So you click on print page, and then in your, in your printer, in your simple printer, just choose color if you need to. You know, you choose what printer you're using. If you have only one, not a problem. And you can print it. And you know what? You have 20 people in your Bible class that are sitting with you in your home, in a home meeting. Print 20 copies, and that will be fine. We allow you. Pastor Mark is, really wants that to be spread and given to people. So this way, you, you and it's not a violation of a copyright, right? You can just print it and hand it out. And then you can study together, you can read it in Hebrew, see the importance of that, see the difference. And this is the version of the New Testament uh, of the Mark Bills Bible. Now, look again. This is the package, but you don't really need the package. When you do, you can do an immediate online activation when you go to an address that you'll get there once you purchase it. But the address to go to purchase that is e sm.us forward slash Bible. Let me repeat that. esm.us forward slash Bible. And once you purchase it, a simple thing. You go there, make yourself username, password, as we mentioned, and you ask for an activation. This is a license. It's a personal license. So you have to do it with your real name. You can't use one name and then license, you know, you, you need to license to your real name. You can use any password and any, um, any username that you want, but you're registering it as a license to yourself, and you make it as a personal license. By mail, you'll see inside a certificate of authenticity. This certificate tells you that this is a genuine Mark Bills Bible, and on the other side, you'll see the information how to log in and how to... Um, Make, make yourself a member of this Bible. And I want to thank you very much for listening to me. And this is the Mark Bills Bible. Thank you and shalom, shalom to all of you.